This is a review of Ben Opapari's Songwriters on Process website. Opapari has a PhD in language and literature and he created this website in 2010 as an ode to the creative process of the songwriter and as a resource for professional and novice musicians to investigate the generative and writing processes musicians actually employ when designing music. On this website we can explore dozens of interviews with musicians from various musical backgrounds and gain unique insights into their creative and writing processes. Opapari's background and love of writing, language, and literature stem from his preoccupation with music, song lyrics, and steadfast diet of concerts. There are links provided to Opapari's popular publications to further establish his ethos. The Songwriters on Process website is a digital space for music fans and musicians to explore and learn about how a variety of musicians are creating new music. Much like the New York Times Writers on Writers series, the Songwriters on Process website can facilitate cogent discussions about a variety of writing studies topics like genres, discourse communities, and methods for research. Composition and writing faculty particularly interested in process pedagogy and writing about writing curriculums can utilize this website to facilitate rhetorical and pedagogical discussions about invention strategies, approaches to drafting, revising, and delivery, multimodal composing, and ethnographic and qualitative research concepts, examining the database of interviews as a digital artifact, a set of data nodes, and a subjective narrative at the same time. I was particularly interested in reviewing this website because I am both a musician and a writing instructor who implements process pedagogy into my writing courses. My composition students conduct a think aloud study on their composing process like the one Carol Birkenkotter employs to study Donald Murray's process and the one Sandra Pearl implements to study the composing processes of unskilled writers. In addition to reading scholarly text about the writing process from Mike Rose, Janet E. Mig, and Charles Bazerman to prepare for this autoethnography, students read how several popular writers like Annie Lamont and Stephen King consider and negotiate the writing process. However, examining how musicians formulate music provides student writers and makers learning how to build and develop their ideas and words, sounds, and images with a set of unique examples of a multimodal composing process. Examining how musicians formulate music provides student writers and makers learning how to build and develop their ideas in words, sounds, and images with a set of unique examples of a multimodal composing process. Studying the composing and generative processes of musicians and connecting these processes to writing studies is especially valuable in our multimodal culture. Students can learn about the composing processes and generative strategies for media and print content they are familiar with and relate it back to writing studies if given the opportunity and taught how to make these connections. Like scholarship and other forms of professional writing, writing music is messy and it requires a sophisticated process. Scholars interested in multimodal literacies like Jody Shipka, Cheryl Ball, Jeff Rice, and Cynthia Self would encourage a comprehensive investigation and analysis of a multimodal composing process that involves text and sound as a means to develop and explore multiliteracies. Writing instructors can ask students to consider how musicians combine words and sounds to create multimodal text and how that process is similar and different from print strategies for writing. Students can analyze and discuss how drafting, feedback, and revising function when designing multimodal text. I had a student in my course publish a paper on the composing process that compares the revision strategies of musicians with the revision strategies of writers to see what they can learn from each other, so there are significant benefits for students who study multimodal composing processes. The layout of the site is simple and accessible. The most current interviews are on the front page. But at the bottom of the home page, there is an archive dating back to 2010, where students and instructors can access dozens of interviews and discussions about the writing and creative process, providing plenty of material to examine without overlap or redundancy. The archive is a great place to access material pertaining to a particular year for music, but the A through Z interviews page allows us to access the most current published interviews at the top of the page and to scroll down and look for a specific name or band. There are also feature interviews from more well-known musicians like Hall & Oates. 
The interviews are poignant and accessible. In the interview with John Darnell, band member and lead singer-songwriter for The Mountain Goats, Opapare opens with some background on Darnell as a writer of both fiction and songs. Darnell has won numerous book awards for his published fiction. Before we learn more about Darnell's process, we can listen to a track from The Mountain Goats' new album with an embedded YouTube video. The interview questions and answers separate these types of musician interviews from other musician interviews in popular magazines like Rolling Stone or Billboard. A substantial amount of interviews with musicians capture surface level information about the artist and his or her composing processes. Opapari asks questions about where ideas for songs come from and how these musicians draft and revise a song. Opapari digs deeper into the musician's creative process than most popular interviews with musicians and songwriters, examining how musicians grapple with multiple situational variables relevant to both print and multimodal writers, like where and when writing takes place and under what constraints and limitations does the composing process have to consider. He asks questions about writer's block and how musicians get themselves through block moments, and questions about the frequency, environment, location, and emotional labor for writing that ultimately normalize an extremely complicated process for creating music. Asking students to read about how these writing processes work helps writing instructors dismantle outdated notions of creative genius that many times prevent students from writing and creating in the composition classroom. There is also extensive discussion on the revision process in these interviews which I think is especially valuable for teaching and learning with this website. Teaching students how revision works and what it looks like in a variety of contexts is important. For example, in an interview Teresa Wayman and Opapari co-conducted with Yukima Nagano from Little Dragon, Nagano contends that she draws out her ideas for songs before writing the lyrics. Nagano even uses Peter Elvo's famous mantra when describing how she uses her journal to, quote, make a mess while drafting her song lyrics. Darnell from the Mountain Goats reiterates how much distance he needs from his writing to make it work. He needs to step away from his writing for a few days so his ideas can incubate and grow. He also discusses how his current reading impacts his writing process. He reads all the time, and ideas from his readings find themselves in his own writing. Reading and discussing interviews about process work great with a process pedagogy like writing about writing. Reading about how musicians create first drafts when working through their process is a great way to expand our students' understanding of process pedagogy and the reality of the writing process. Using pop culture modes of communication like music to examine the writing and making process helps normalize the complications, anxieties, and frustrations that come with the writing process that most students use as an excuse to justify how they are not meant to be writers. I mentioned teaching an autoethnography assignment earlier that asked students to use Think Aloud to examine their writing process. This website opens up a new angle for writing teachers to use to design assignments about the composing process. Musicians create music using a very similar process as writers. The more we learn how music works, the more we can play around with the process. We can use this website to ask how musicians invent a song and to compare how the development and creation of a song is both different and similar to print genres. That is what makes this website so valuable. Those of us that teach writing about writing and process pedagogy can use the website to make connections about invention, drafting, revising, and delivering, to explore multimodal composing, and to examine quantitative research methods and interview strategies. Mm -hmm.